Fox Sports. We are Fox We are Arizona. Downtown Phoenix, Arizona, the light rail riding on by. Yes, it is time for 2011's version of interleague play. Let's get it going. A big weekend around Major League Baseball. And the Arizona Diamondbacks, dare I say, on a bit of a roll. They have won five of six. They have won three in a row. The Twins really struggling this year, but they, too, have won three straight. The Diamondbacks climbing closer to, as we like to call it in this booth, Mount 500. We'll talk about the standings once they get over 500. The Minnesota Twins have a long, long ways to go to reach that point that truly is shocking still when you see it. Hi, folks. Welcome back to the ballpark on this Friday. We trust your week has been a good one. This is Tom Candiotti. My name is Darren Sutton, and it's stunning for the Twins because when you look at the last decade of what they have done and just win, win, go to the postseason after rebuilding, you can see it's Yankees, Red Sox, Angels, Twins. They've done it with a marginal payroll. Finally, they've been able to pay, raise that payroll. But, Candy, there's two names that they've leaned on who have not been there for them. The first one, Joe Maurer. The second one, Justin Morneau. Yeah, and that and that's why they're scuffling a little bit this year. They need their man, Joe Maurer, their $180 million guy in there. And he's done it with the average. He's a spray hitter. He has a little bit of power, but he just bangs the ball all over the place. He's missed their clutch, hits with runners in scoring position. And not only that, but he anchors behind the plate. And Justin Morneau, he hasn't gotten it going yet. He's starting to come out of it a little bit. The Twins desperately need this guy's bat. He's the guy that provides all the power and the pop in that lineup. And without Maurer, they really need Justin Morneau. No. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing how this plays out in this series because you feel the Twins are coming around offensively, which means Ian Kennedy is very important. Kennedy is on the bump. He's pitched like the ace of this team, especially his last five starts. I mean, he has really been unbelievable, really, this whole season. And the biggest thing for him is his fastball command early in the game. He needs to establish the inside, the outside. Once he gets that command, he goes with that ball can change. He goes with the slider, go with the curveball. But it's that fastball command which makes him successful. I love that. He's bringing out the Vulcan change. We're going to we're going to talk pitching a lot tonight. Glad to have you with us. And when we come back, a lot of respect and honor for a legend and a former Minnesota twin, Harmon Killebrew. And, of course, the Minnesota twins in town, they honored him as he was laid to rest this morning. We'll get that perspective from the Midwest and from the twins when we come back.
For the game, Ozzie Blues, your former Senator Scout, set of Harmon Killebrew, he hit line drives that put the opposition in jeopardy. And I don't mean infielders, I mean the outfielders. The guy could slug, that is for sure. Welcome back to the show. The game of baseball lost a true legend earlier this week on Tuesday in Scottsdale. Twins Hall of Famer Harmon Killebrew passed away at the age of 74 after a five-month battle against cancer. On the field, he was known as Killer, a slugger, but away from the game, and today he was remembered as a kind and gentle man. Hundreds gathered at the Christ Church of the Valley in Peoria, including six Hall of Famers and the entire Twins team. Killebrew played 22 seasons, belted 573 home runs, but today it was the man and not the player who was honored. We'll always strive to be Harmon Killebrew and strive to treat people the way he treated people and make everybody feel comfortable, make everybody feel like they're special. And for one of the biggest names in, in a sport to be able to make, you know, every single person he came in contact with feel special, that's, that's a pretty big achievement. This is a man who uh, really introduced uh, Major League Baseball to a whole generation of fans. Um, you can't go uh, anywhere without somebody having a Harmon Killebrew story. And just think of how many people are Twins fans today because of Harmon Killebrew. Well, and Twins legend and soon-to-be Hall of Famer Burt Blylevin closed the ceremony by saying that Harmon touched us all, and then the crowd stood and gave Harmon one last standing ovation. He was quite a man. Stick around. It is almost time for Interleague Baseball here at Chase Field. The Twins and your Arizona Diamondbacks. Ian Kennedy on the hill. For the Snakes, back live on Fox Sports Arizona in just a bit. Brought to you by Gila River Casinos. Play slots with your Players Club card at any Gila River Casino. You can win up to $20,000 instantly. Jack in the box. Right now, get the new bourbon barbecue steak grilled sandwich at participating restaurants. Southwest Airlines. New rapid rewards, unlimited rewards seats. No blackout dates. The Minnesota Twins have made their journey to the great state of Arizona and veteran manager Ron Gardenhire. As you can see, the jersey honoring Harmon Killebrew just over his shoulder. He has been a big winner since he took over for Tom Kelly, the other legendary manager. Stability has been the key. Stability in the Midwest has been the key. When guys like that, who we no longer have with us, still come around Hall of Famers and spend time with 20-year-olds, Leadership and stability has been the story. It's been a very tough year for a franchise that has been so strong. Let's play baseball. Over the outside corner, Denard Spann 
starting to hit a little bit more as he faces Ian Kennedy, making his 10th start of the year. Four wins with a 3.05 ERA. And that one sails outside. One and one the count. Those are sparkling numbers by Ian Kennedy. He does it with four different pitches. He's got the fastball, the curveball, slider, and his Vulcan change. But the first thing he tries to do is establish that fastball, the location of the fastball. He needs to have the command of the fastball. So two and one the count to span. The young man drafted in the first round in 0-2 by the Twins out of Tampa Catholic High School. Lines that one to center field, and the Twins are on the move. Again, Minnesota coming in 15 and 27. Span swinging the bat pretty well. He just took a ball out over the plate that way, went with it. Line shot to center field. Let's take a look at the rest of the lineup for Minnesota. Cover Plouffe down below, Jason Kubel, Justin Morneau, Michael Kadire, Danny Valencia. Great rookie year last year. Delman Young, Rene Rivera, and Brian Dunsing is on the mound. 0 for 1 in the big leagues, by the way, in his career. You know, it almost looks like the top three guys are the guys that do the damage right now. You know, Morneau's not really getting it going yet. But the top of the order is what you really have to look at if you're a starting pitcher. Boy, Span in the last couple of years has been highly underrated as a big part of these Minnesota Twins, and he can run. That one sails outside. 1-0 and the count to Trevor Plouffe, young man out of high school, drafted by the Twins, another first-round pick in 2004. Out of Crespi Prep School out there in Southern California. Your old stomping grounds? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Many stops in my life. Good athletic school. As that one is outside, 2-0 and the count. Kennedy's been very good about holding guys on at first base. He's only given up two stolen bases this year. But he's very good at holding the ball. He's very good about varying his move over to first base. And you need to do that against a guy like Span. Infield in a step or two because of the speed. Kennedy not necessarily a ground ball pitcher if you're thinking double play. And 2 and 0 oh is the count. The Twins are off to their worst start in over a decade. You remember we showed you what has gone on with these Twins starting in 2000 until 2010. One of the best in the American League. This is their worst start since 99. Over the outside, 2 and 1 the count. The Twins of 99, 15 and 27 to start the year. Finished the season 63 and 97 and won. Had an old fashioned tie. Painting. Didn't get the call. That's Tim Sheeta behind the plate back there. And a lot of times you have to develop a little, you know, confidence with the umpire also. He nails Montero's glove right there, but. He doesn't get the call, but you know, you can't get frustrated as a pitcher. You need to stay right there. Boy, almost threw that ball away. A nice play by Xavier Dady over there. But you have to stay right there with your game plan. His game plan is on the outer third and on the inner third. Three and one the count. Jason Kubel waits on deck, of course, again, doing battle with a healing Morno. And without Justin. And his big booming bat, it's been a different feel. Bouncing ball could be two as we spoke of. There's one. Nice turn at second by Kelly Johnson. As always, a double play that is rolled up. Just the fifth rolled up this year by Ian Kennedy. A good pitch. A little bit on the outside part of the plate. Rolls over the top of it. Very surprised Span wasn't going in that situation. And because he wasn't going, he's able to turn a double play right there. So that's a nice break for the Diamondbacks. Minnesota boy Jason Kubel Highland High School in the great state of Minnesota 12th round pick in 2000. The twins over the last couple of decades really draft a lot of high school players. They want to teach them the twins way consistently. Yeah they believe in their system they believe in their minor league coaches and to be able to be able to teach them the white the right way to play the twins way to play baseball. And they've been very, very successful. In fact, how many times have you seen somebody go down on the major league level? They call somebody up that you don't even hear of before, but they fit right in because they know that system. Which is stunning what is going on with these twins. The little things. They've always done the little things very well. This year, they're not bunting well. They only have five sack bunts. Only Boston has fewer. Hot shot. That's a foul ball. 
Things just have a different feel. They are 28th and walks. Some of the things that we are used to seeing as Twins trademarks are not yet part of this year's team. Yeah, and especially their, you know, their productive outs. Their productive outs are way down from, you know, way under league average. So they need to, you know, and a lot of that, you know, it depends on Morneau and Mauer. That bat shatters, bounces into the seats. I take a peek down below. Everyone is all right. Kennedy gets Google. Familiar territory, the longtime American League star. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for his National League Diamondbacks, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. All well, good to have Willie Bloomquist top of the order with those healthy wheels working. Ryan Roberts, Justin Upton, Stephen Drew. Then it's Chris Young, Miguel Montero, Xavier Nady, and Kelly Johnson getting a chance in the eighth slot now. Different look for Kelly. And Ian Kennedy. Well, he's 28, he's from Kansas. Brian Matthew Dunsing making his eighth start of the year. He's two and three with a 4.61 ERA. Got hammered by Toronto last time out. Out of the University of Nebraska as he fires a strike. What do we know about it? Well, we know he throws a fastball, a curveball, a slider, and changeup. It doesn't throw real hard, around 91 miles an hour. You know, his second best pitch looks to be his changeup. He likes to pull the string. Look at Willie Bloomquist. Good to have him back. This is his first start since missing. Well, felt like nearly a month, but missing all the time that he missed with the hamstring injury. And the uh, the salty veteran puts it in play. I tell you, you know that ball he reached probably about six, seven inches off the plate, got that change up right there, dunked it out into short center field. But you know how many times at the beginning of this season when Willie was healthy did he start the game off with a base hit, got the running game going, was leading the league in stolen bases at one time. He has been the spark plug of this team when healthy. Eric Young's got his pupil, by the way, as that one is over the outside corner. Eric Young, the first base coach. Matt Williams, the third base coach. We love all the nicknames for Ryan Roberts. Folks have been having fun with the young man. But Bloomquist was the one guy that attended the 6 a.m. stealing bases session with Eric Young every day this spring. As that one is driven to the right side. Deep. Kubel chasing. He's got it. Nice play, Jason Kubel. Uh, Kubel coming into this ballpark, not playing here before. You can practice in practice, but there's nothing like live game action. That's a nice play. And I think that's one of the hardest things about interleague play. You don't get to see that park that often. It looked like to me, you know, Kubel got really got turned around a little bit, made that very awkward catch, but he stayed with it. Really showing his athleticism right there. Willie Bloomquist looking at it. He's not sure. He goes back. He goes, oh, he's not going to catch that. Oh, he goes, there he is. He, he gets back. But a nice play by Kubel out in right field. A couple of years ago, the Diamondbacks and Justin Upton was on the team. They went to Minnesota, and it was disheartening. It was a sweep in the hands of the Minnesota Twins, and the Twins were rolling. Every hit with a runner in scoring position. Upton in that series, unfortunately, fall in the line with his fell in the line with his teammates. He was 0 for 9 against Minnesota. 
but Upton with nine home runs and 23 RBIs this year. Well, the D-backs desperately need to get Upton's bat hot. You're going to hit right down in that number three hole. I mean, this is the guy that, you know, you want to put a little fear in the opposition. They got to know when Justin Upton's getting ready to come up to the plate. Now that 0 for 9 kind of stands alone as a struggle in interleague play. I mean, look at what Justin has done overall. He has enjoyed the American League foes. He hammered the Yankees when he had a chance. I'll say 419. Pulls that one foul. That's a big swing. One ball and one strike the count on Upton. Well, again, that was a change up. Dunsing likes to turn it over against the right handers. So that ball is going to go down and away. And you really haven't seen a pitcher that that often. In fact, the only guys that had any kind of, you know, at bats against them have been Bloomquist, Miranda, and Branyan. So you really have to take a step back and be a little patient your first time at bat. Well, that outside corner doesn't exist because Kennedy wanted it. He didn't get it. And right there, I think Dunsing wanted it. He didn't get it. Yeah, Tashita is just not opening up out there yet. But again, as a pitcher, you early in the game, you have to stay with your game plan right there. Look at Rivera didn't even move that glove right there, and he didn't get the call. You want an umpire that's consistent, to be fair, to the man behind the plate, and he has been. And so at least you realize that you're going to have to bring it in if you want to go in there. Three and one the count. Tim Cheetah behind the plate, as we mentioned. And sometimes umpires will also loosen up when they see you consistently hitting that spot. You know, they will start to loosen up also. I find that just intriguing that, that it actually could move a bit. Three and one. We keep an eye on Bloomquist. Oh, boy. So is Dunson. Bueno, right on top of the bag. As we took a look over there, so did the left hander, and he picks him off. Well, you know, this this year Dunsing has not given up a stolen base. He's very good when he brings his leg up. You know, it's it's very difficult for the base dealer to pick it up. He doesn't bring his leg behind the rubber, which makes him have to throw to the plate. It's a very difficult move to read for a base runner. Three and two the count Justin Upton. Upton six hits and 18 at bats in this homestand. He had a tough and a frustrating day yesterday. He had an offer. He was 0 for 4, but has a couple of home runs. Four runs batted in here on this homestand. Takes that one out of the catcher's mitt, and we'll do it again. You know, even this at bat, Densing has been outside, away, almost the whole at bat to Upton. Change ups and fastballs. So Just is out there. He's almost diving out there right now. Dunsing really looking for light switch in the dark this month. He has had a tough, tough May. Double digit ERA this month. Right back to the screen it goes. But his first five starts, he pitched like a top of the rotation starter. His first five, he was sub three. Well, even last year he had a great year, 10 and 3, a 2.62 earned run average. And I know that's a different ballpark than the old Metrodome, but still, that those are great numbers. And one of those funky years where he found his way into the rotation, so you appear 53 times with only 13 starts. This year, a different feel, though he has now, because of his struggles, tried to help out once on occasion out of the bullpen. So you're saying you can't come in and vulture any wins, right? No, that's exactly right. <laughs> Into the dirt. Good at bat, Upton. Dunsing, as you said, stayed stubborn, and Upton was right there with him. Let's take a look at the defense working against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Delman Young, Denard Span, Jason Kubel, outfield. Valencia, Kluf, Michael Kadire, Justin Morneau, infield. Rene Rivera is behind the plate, catching Brian Dunsing. Not really your household names, but they get that job done. Well, and as has been the Twins' way, truly, when you add in a, a Joe Maurer in there, there's not a lot of departures. And then if they were playing an American League game, they're trying to get Jim Tomey healthy as well. So this team was playing in the American League. Really, you would add Maurer, you would add Tomey, and a lot of the names that folks maybe haven't heard of still would be out there. 
You're right. You know, and also, you know, Morneau really hasn't been doing it. Kadir really hasn't gotten it going yet. You know, those are the thing, the guys, the names that you think of with the Twins, and they just have not shown up yet. Steven takes a pitch that is low, one and one, the count. Yeah, missing pieces. That, that truly is the story for Minnesota. Jim Tomey out since April the 30th. Delman Young, getting him back now, able to contribute, but he missed some time. Had a couple of big years lately, and of course, Joe Maurer, really one of the game's best players. I mean. On the ground, roll to the right side. Kadire will field and fire over to his good buddy Morneau. They clean it up. We played one. Scores. The last season, four consecutive seasons with 100 or more RBIs. I mean, truly a Minnesota lumberjack as he digs in. And then the collision and the concussion and the second half of the season. And it's taken him until mid May to where he starts to show signs of the slugger that we once knew. Yeah, he just has not been right. He's just starting to get back to that form that's made him so potent. And we're talking to Burt Blylevin before the game, and and even even Burt said that boy, sometimes he'd be over there and at first base, and you weren't sure if he could catch the ball. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the concussion for you. Out front, boy, what a changeup! Had the aggressive slugger fooled badly, and Roberts, he stays with it, so Morneau is erased. Before Kennedy faces Kadire, let's take a look at Arizona's defense. It's Willie in the outfield. Chris Young, Justin Upton, David Robleski, and associate sponsors Roberts, Drew, Johnson, Nady on the infield. Miguel Montero catches. And Ian Kennedy, good to have Willie Bloomquist back there. And according to a couple of members of the coaching staff, there is your best fielding first baseman. Xavier Nady, they are proud of what he has done with a glove. Not really throwing like he wants to in the outfield. And 0 1 the count to Michael Kadire. But it looks like we may be starting to see the makings of a platoon. You know, I, I really believe that because. Uh oh, that one's belted. Deep left field. Kadire picked on a changeup. He killed it. He has started to pick it up this month in 15 games, hitting 333. Minnesota strikes first, and the Twins lead it 1 to nothing. Well, you're right. That was the Vulcan change. Got it up in the zone, about belt high over the middle of the plate. Well, he had a time perfectly, too, and there's no doubt about it. You know, that's one of the guys that we were talking about. Michael Kadire, along with Maurer and Morneau. You know, it was a couple of years ago that Michael Kadire was on a winter tour. And I'm sure you've heard about baseball teams that travel around the state. And there he stands next to Harmon Killebrew's jersey. And Killebrew was in the traveling group with him. 
And when a ball came by, Killer, as they called him, Mr. Killerbrew looked at the baseball and said, who, who signed this ball for you? And he said, well, that was Michael Kadire, a couple of guys down. Killerbrew pulled him aside. He said, if you're going to be a big leaguer, I need to be able to read your signature as Danny Valencia is erased. When I read your signature, then I will know who you are. The two forged a relationship, and today, Michael Kadire, I would imagine with a little bit of inspiration, paying tribute with that home run to Harmon Killebrew. Well, uh, you know, that's got to feel good after, you know, the services today for Harmon and things. And to be able to go up there and hit a home run like that, that's pretty special. And this is going to be an inspired Twins team. We can show you a lot of graphics, and we will. And they are accurate. The numbers are horrible offensively for Minnesota. But there's uh, there's some emotion involved in today's game for the Twins because he wasn't a player that once played for Minnesota and then came back around every three or four years. He was a regular, a Hall of Fame regular. And these young players, they knew who he was as Delman Young picks up a base hit. Well, he's... He, one of the things about Harmon Killebrew is, is you've heard nothing but good things about him. And, and I think we've all come into contact with Harmon before. His little slider that Delman Young knocks to the left side of the infield. But he's just always such a gentle guy, a caring guy, a guy that's, that has all the time in the world for anybody. And, you know, guys like that leave their marks on other people. And especially a guy with the kind of credentials that Harmon has to come down there and talk to these guys and be around them all the time. And that's amazing. Passed away early in the week. Burt Blylevin, who sits next door, still a dear friend with Harmon Killebrew, spoke with him on Monday on the telephone. And he didn't want to talk about himself, Mr. Killebrew, and he didn't want to talk about the fact that he was losing his battle with cancer. All he said to Burt was, Burt, you got to get him going. You got to get the twins going. So do what you can. One of his final words to Burt Blylevin, get him going, Burt. And so you can understand. Sharing those words like that with Mr. Bly Levin, who joined us and on our pregame show. And by the way, congratulations to the big redhead going to the Hall of Fame. But you can understand why they're they're inspired tonight. Oh yes. Yeah, it's it's different. Throw the numbers out, like you said. This is a, a different baseball game. Down the line it goes. And, oh, how about that? Wait a minute now. Wait, wait a minute now. Was it was that a screamer on the fly? Yeah, that's a, right, a nice play, right? He hauled it in. Let's see. Brought his glove to the game. Hmm. One and two, the count. Rene Rivera. Curveball is outside, and the gentleman was. He's listening to the governor on the radio. Listening to Bob Melvin in the booth as well because you've stepped over to the television side. Bob making his radio debut. As that one is outside. Well, again, it hasn't been there, Candy. My but goodness. it's a strike, but it hasn't been there. You're right. You know, now this is here we are, and he's he's probably dotted that outside corner probably four or five times now. That was right Ooh. there. I don't even know if that was really an outside <laughs> corner. So I don't know what Tim Sheeta you missed that one buddy the three two hot shot foul ball and, and, and by the way quickly our, our fan down the left field line do you think that was a good enough play to maybe reward them you're kind of the guest judge if you will since Gracie is out did you is that is that a solid play I reward everybody for making a catch like that all right there's a contract <laughs> he gets a contract four free tickets. He will win four free tickets and a discount at the team shop. He doesn't know it, but they'll be coming to see him. And he is going to come to a game on us. Change up. Strike three. Kennedy's going to try to feel out this strike zone, Candy. We're going to watch this tonight. It's going to be interesting. That, that's a contract.
Don't forget any time the D-back scores six runs or more Taco Bell gives away three free tacos with a large drink purchase four to six the following day. As Chris Young leads it off well, a bit of a juggle in the batting order Young is batted at the top he's better on down he's comfortable at five that's where he is but we see Kelly Johnson down at the eighth slot tonight. Kirk Gibson's never shy about shaking things up. Breaking ball that's a good pitch on one the count. You know a lot of times managers will put a guy that's struggling in the number two hole. You know hit him before your best hitter in the lineup the number three guy but that hasn't benefited Kelly. So uh, when that doesn't work you got to drop him down and not hitting in the number eight is very difficult you know in the so National too. League. A little different in the American League because you don't have a pitcher hitting behind you. So when you're hitting the number eight spot you know pitchers can afford to kind of miss a little bit not come and give you good strikes because they know they have the pitcher following. One and two the count and the longer I spend I spent a few years in the American League calling games the longer I spend in the National League I realized I think that's the toughest spot to hit in the order period period in both leagues both spots I think batting eighth is the toughest spot to hit. Well you don't see too many guys hitting 350 in the number eight hole. <laughs> we did earlier this year you remember Miguel <laughs> change up strike three. That's funny you'd say that. Miguel Montero was hitting 400 and Gibby gave him a shot at that eight slot just trying to go left right left right all the way down. Hey by the way this is a tough pitch to handle. Yeah it's that change up again. He likes getting to that change up especially to the right handed hitters. Miguel Montero four home runs 15 RBIs. Couple of hits last night. Big swing opened up a little bit early. Miguel kidding himself before the game with a few folks around saying I didn't think I'd ever get to hit against a left hander again. The uh, the old war horse Henry Blanco was going to take all my time. Shoots that one the other way and I I promptly said Miguel now if you're going to hit 222 against lefties then you might not see that playing time anymore. You think I said that. Well. I, I actually didn't say that. I don't think you said no. That. I actually <laughs> didn't say that. But he is hitting just 222, and he knows those numbers. Yeah, he's really scuffled as of late. I think one of the things that when you look at Montero, when he gets locked in, he starts hitting those balls to left center field. He's not doing that right now. Well, he comes in with a slider down and away, out in front of it, loses his whole backside right there, and. Can't hold up when he gets when he gets good and wound up and, and, and really starts turning that shoulder disappears too. He tries to gear up for the fastball and you're right he pulls out. Nady pops that one up into the seats it goes. Hey every time a Diamondback hits a homer Fulton Holmes donates one hundred and fifty dollars to the Central Arizona Mountain Rescue Association. When it gets tough being Xavier Nady or Juan Miranda or Russell Brandon is when you finish a series albeit just a two gamer and you have one at bat. You only have four bats on this whole homestand. Big swing he dropped that back shoulder it's a mile high to Dyer over under and out one two three go the Arizona Diamondbacks Ian Kennedy trying to figure out that outside corner after this.
tribute being paid to Harmon Killebrew. Certainly, we call him an Arizonan as well because of the 20 years he spent as a part time resident and, of course, his family receiving a rousing ovation once it was announced that they're in attendance as well. Again, those of us in Arizona, and I'm a new Arizonan, but you could run into him everywhere around the valley and more specifically at charity events. At charity events. And so we, uh, I think, in Arizona feel like we lost a good friend as well, a baseball friend in Harmon Killebrew. So a nice moment between innings. I don't know if there's ever a golf tournament that I went to where Harmon wasn't there. That's great. Bouncing ball, Brian Dunsing. On across in time for the out. Play is made. That is his second major league at bat. This is Target Field. Earlier today, a memorial. The number three just behind the second base bag. And this is today over in Peoria. Christ Church of the Valley. Rod Carew, the Hall of Famers that were represented. Don Baylor was in attendance today. Paying his respects. Roland Heeman was in attendance today as well. Very classy. An art span may be on the move. Oh, he got it! Willie Bloomquist took a triple away from Denard Span. Wow, what a play. Are you kidding me? Boy, Willie Bloomquist went a long ways going to his left, stretched all the way out, caught that ball diving, ends up on the warning track, but my goodness, what a play. That's a steak dinner. <laughs> Good to have Willie Bloomquist out there. And look, that's with no offense to Rardo Parra that has played a fine left field. Even with his bumps in the road, he's got great range as well. Thinking about a bunt, popping it up. Ian is there. Ian will just run on into the dugout. Willie Bloomquist takes a triple away from Denard Span. Fine defense, closing the gap. How's that hamstring feel? Close the gap. Bloomquist with a fabulous play. Former Sun Devil that can play, by the way, anywhere on the diamond outside of pitcher and catcher. Well, and Art Span still stunned that that was taken away. 1 0 the count to Kelly Johnson. The Diamondbacks talking about reaching and trying to find their offense. Twins doing the same. But there might be a reason that you start to break up at the top of the order guys like Young who's now batting fifth and Johnson who's batting eighth because they at times were one and two for quite a while. Statistically it gets challenging for Gibson. 
As that one has popped up. Our Chaz Roberts air conditioning cool play of the game. Willie Bloomquist and you know Denard Span. Kenny, I, I think he's not quite sure if it's caught. He just keeps going. Well, he knows he hit the ball well. And he's, he's coming around second base. Watch this. He turns it on. <laughs> I think he's in disbelief also. I tell you, Willie Bloomquist is so fundamentally sound. That first step would enable him to be able to catch that ball and haul it down in left center field. The nine slot in the order is Ian Kennedy. Owen won the count. But Gibson kind of creating a valley between those two in the order as that one is a foul ball with a broken bat. And one of the reasons is simply put reaching. Kelly Johnson's on base percentage is 251. Now that is 90th in the National League of the 94 qualifiers. Chris Young's is 264. That is 89th in the National League of the 94 qualifiers. There comes a point where it's challenging, even though Gibson. Looks at his lineup and gets extra base hits from Young. Where if you have those two together, there's not many many guys on base. No, and also throw in the strikeout factor for Kelly. Because would you say he struck, he struck out over 50 times now? I think. Yeah, he is right at that number. He is at 53 strikeouts. You know, and it just hasn't been a couple weeks. It's been you know a month and a half. So sometimes things get. Beyond what a slump is, and he's just got to work his way out of it. Change up, strike three. Take the D backs wherever you go this season. Subscribe to MLB.tv today to see every D backs game on demand on your computer. Visit dbacks.com for details. MLB.tv, baseball everywhere. It's a good app, great to have on your phone, a good way to follow whatever team you want to follow. You can get the audio right there on your phone whenever you want it. It's good stuff. Here's Willie Bloomquist. That one misses low. One and oh, the count to Willie. Willie singled back in the first inning. Wasn't well struck, just an off speed pitch off the end of the bat. Fastball. That outside corner just uh, loosened up a little bit. In fact, I think that was a little bit more outside than some of the other ones that were non calls. All right, we'll take note of that last pitch. Curveball is away. It's something you never stop to think about. That an umpire, as you said, just kind of loosens up a little bit. Bouncing ball. Boy, and that call of the pitch away had him chase the pitch away. Very interesting how it works. All right, Mr. Kennedy, I guess that outside corner is now open for business. Go get it. During today's game, receive a coupon for huge savings, fries, fresh food, famous low prices. 
by Porsche of North Scottsdale. Visit us at scottsdale.porschedealer.com. Happy Friday night, one and all. Glad to have you with us. Chase Field, a nice crowd still making their way in this evening as we play into the fourth inning. Just about 7.30 in the great state of Arizona. As Jason Kubel digs in and takes the first pitch, a changeup that is over for strike one. And it's a gorgeous night. It's going to get warmer this weekend, but it is just a beautiful, beautiful night. Curveball into the dirt. Remember, too, when we see you tomorrow night at the ballpark, if we happen to see you on television, if you can't make it out, we'll see you later. Later in the day. The game starts a couple of hours later, a 7 10 first pitch. High pop into left field. That's if we see you at all tomorrow night. Our AT&T trivia question. I'm hoping we're here tomorrow. It <laughs> better be. Uh, when Harmon Killebrew retired in 1975, what three players were ahead of him on the all-time home run list? What three players were ahead of him on the all-time home run list? Oh, that, that's easy. I think that's more of a, a tribute a tribute question. I think that's just a, a few more ways to honor Harmon Killebrew. Burt Blylevin did a great thing when he was speaking today. As that one is that cut fastball in on the hands. And Justin Upton races and puts it away. You called it earlier a slider. He'll call it a cut fastball. I've called it both. He's called it both. It's just a different look for him. It's just a different look. Well, it, what it does is, you know, it just kind of cuts a little bit. Sometimes as a pitcher, if you want it to be more of a cutter, you keep it flat and you made it bore about hand high to the lefties. Against the righty, you might want to get a little bit more tilt to it, and it looks more like a slider. So it's one of those pitches. You can call it either one, but as a pitcher, you can make it do one or the other. Well, and, and that strike one to Michael Kadire, who, by the way, picked on a hanging changeup and homered with it. The key for Ian and the way he goes about his business with, with quite some, some wisdom is that one is inside is he doesn't develop and add a pitch, and it's the end-all, beat-all. It's just a nice add on. You know what I mean? Well, there's a time where he might be able to use a certain type of pitch. That was and, it right there, by the way. And he's the thinking pitcher. You know, he's not a guy that's going to go out there and just try to outstuff you. You know, he comes very well prepared. He's got a very good game plan. You know, and sometimes he might, you know, throw more curveballs than sliders or more changeups than, than curveballs. It just depends on, you know, what the hitters are. Some guys will come out there and they got their stuff and it doesn't matter. They're just going to pitch to their strengths and that's it. Hit it if you can. He's not like that. All right. That outside corner did exist on a pitch in the last half inning for the left hander on the mound. It was in the same spot as this one. It was. And, you know, the little glove movement right there by Montero. But, you know, Ian Kennedy's really telling the umpire right there, Tim Sheeta, that, you know, I got to have that call. And he's nailed that spot a few times now, and he hasn't gotten it. To Kennedy's credit, handled himself just fine. We, you were sharing with us earlier that to watch when he comes to the plate. Maybe if he does a little politicking. And that's your chance in the National League to be able to talk to the umpire a little bit. The dire is erased. The one thing we do know, outside corner or not, Ian Kennedy has sat down seven twins in a row.
He's just fine, folks. That's all I'm going to say about that right now. I'm going to be a little cloak and dagger like Gibby tends to be at times when he's sharing information with all of us. For now, I'm just saying he's just fine. If you ask all the right questions, I might tell you what I mean. Does that sound like Gibby? That's pretty. In his meeting with the media? Or he'll go say, go ask, he'll go ask that person. <laughs> yeah, there are some struggles with Kirk Gibson. Well, you, why don't you go ask him about it? Swing and a miss, Ryan Roberts. No balls and two strikes to count. All I'm saying is Kirk Gibson is just fine. <laughs> Roberts fly to right field in the first inning. And we'll show you why. We will show you why. If maybe. It's an earned thing. Oh and two the count. Right back to the mound. Watch Roberts how he just runs clean to the bag right there. No problems. You know he's all right. Kirk Gibson earlier. Some workouts going on. Now you have to listen. There he is running the bases. Oh Gibby. Oh boy. <laughs> and there of course is the chalk outline. Isn't that beautiful? You know, I love watching the reaction of all the players on the field as soon as that happened. Justin Upton dipped that back shoulder underneath him. There to put it away in center field is Denard Span. So he's all right. Just one more time. It's a bunting drill. Calls himself safe. Look at the players on the ground. <laughs> By the way, that's a sign of a loose club, and I think that's a good sign. I tell you, it's classic. Yeah, these guys are around each other for you know, seven months out of the year. you got to have fun. If you can't have fun, it's no fun. And when you got a, a manager that's able to go out there and run like that and also make fun of himself, that's just beautiful. I'd like to tell you truly how he's doing, but I'll just tell you, you'll have to ask him about it. <laughs> one and one the count. Breaking ball. Okay, this Dunsing right now, he's in a very good groove. Both pitchers are. Both pitchers are throwing outstanding. Nine in a row sat down by the left-hander. Again, he had a great April. He's done good things. Steven protecting on a fastball away. Lifts it up and into the seats. That was nothing wrong with a two out RBI here. Get a little rally going. Drive yourself in. Fastball in. He hasn't done that too often. He's pretty much stayed away for the most part all night long. Drew's but he got needs himself to, up. doesn't he? He needs to come in there some. At some point, uh, uh, as soon as the hitters start going outside and taking that outside corner away from him, that's the time when you come in. And then it sets up away. On a roll, the man on the mound. On a roll, their manager on the base bats.
Danny Valencia first pitch swinging swings at a changeup and hits it on one hop out to short the young man out of the University of Miami is erased on a 6 3 ground out both pitchers have been very efficient very very efficient for Kennedy 10 times now three or fewer pitches 10 times three or fewer and for Dunsing eight times three or fewer pitches in retiring the batters and for Kennedy that is eight in a row sat down Dunsing sat down 10 in a row. That's only 50 pitches that he has thrown. Owen won the count to Delman Young. Young got himself a little base hit last at bat between third and short. And this time looks like Drew has taken a couple steps to his right over there. Maybe narrowed down that hole. Well, a lot of space around the bag. You're right. He did close it. Yeah, look up the middle of the infield. Big gap right there. In on the hands over to clean things up is Kelly Johnson. Our AT&T trivia question honoring Harmon Killebrew. Catcher Rene Rivera. Three players ahead of him on the all time list when he retired. You can see Hank Aaron Babe Ruth and Willie Mays. And by the way. We're fly lemon today at the. Service for the late Killebrew as only Burke could do and do very, very well as that one is chopped foul by Rene Rivera. Asked the entire group in attendance to stand and cheer and to give a curtain call as if he had just hit number 574. What a wonderful moment to celebrate one's life. Burt Blylevin is so classy. And everyone did. Everyone in the church stood and cheered for Harmon Killebrew. 0 oh and 2 the count. He's classy, but he also keeps you on your toes, though. I mean, he's got a sense of humor. You know, he, he loves life. He really does. And as a player, he enjoyed this game immensely as, as he was a great pitcher. Just a tremendous guy all around. The roll continues for Kennedy. Now he has sat down 10 in a row. Learn how and play right here at Chase Field by going to the interactive kiosk near section 111 during regular season home games. It's brought to you by Gila River Casino. Chris Young leads it off. Young this year against left handed pitching, hitting 262, but a big slugging percentage of 595 against Southpaws. I mean, he is still Mr. Extra Base Hit. As he takes a fastball that's over the inside corner. He had 23 extra base hits for CY. Broke his bat, rolled it out to short, charging. 
and firing and just in time Plouffe the shortstop. You talk about those extra base hits he still has one more than Prince Fielder coming into play today to lead the National League. Tomorrow before the D-backs versus the Twins game the first 15,000 fans will get the D-backs gnome courtesy of Pepsi. Be sure to look inside your gnome box. It could have tickets for the All-Star game or MLB Fan Fest. Get tickets by calling 602-462-4790 or log on to dbacks.com slash gnome. 0 oh, and 1 the count, Miguel Montero. What's that hat we had a moment ago? I like that hat. That's a good looking D-backs hat. I need to get one of those. That thing's got some use. I really like that kind of the, the throwback look. Uh, it's got to be at the team shop. Mickey going the other way, and it's a foul ball. So no balls and two strikes to count. Again, he's starting to come in a little bit more. Yeah, and I think through the lefties last time he got Miguel Montero out on that slider down and away. So this time, before he goes back out there, he's going to come inside just to make him aware of the fastball, and then look for him to go for that slider down and away again. Doubled up on it. Well, it looked like that time that they were trying to throw. Rivera wanted a high fastball. And I think this ball sailed up and in on, on Miggy. He barely got out of the way of that. That's some serious chin music. College teammate, this left-hander of Jabba Chamberlain and Alex Gordon at Nebraska. Misses outside. A young man that grew up in the Omaha area watching the College World Series as a fan pitched in the College World Series in 2005. Out front. Well, that's a tough pitch to try to pull, isn't it? You have no chance of pulling a pitch like that. He just fooled. And again, the last at bat, he struck out on that same pitch. This time again, he lost his backside, and all he could do is just try to make contact and roll over the top of that. Arizona trying to find a way to step beyond the one hit mark in this game. And the pitchers always have the advantage when you haven't seen them before. And I mean, no one really has any familiarity with with Dunsing other than Bloomquist, Miranda, Brannion. But you got to start making some adjustments in game adjustments that need to happen soon. One and oh the count to Xavier Nady. As we said, Nady on this homestand just five at bats now all told. Five total at bats in both series. Line drive, left center field, it's a base hit. Rolling to the wall. It's an extra base hit. And good for good for Nady because what was happening was Juan Miranda was starting to hit. Miranda was six of his last 12 and hitting lefties very effectively. So you know Nady wanted to pitch in tonight. High leg kick. This ball was down, but he went down and, and got that ball. Not an easy pitch to hit, but a good job of hitting it. Nailing that ball into the left center field gap. Leg kick comes up. It's his timing mechanism, and he timed that one well. All right, here's your, for me, tough assignment batting eighth. Base open, pitcher on deck, what do you do? You want to drive a run in? Yep, and you're probably, the pitcher knows that. He's not going to give you anything good to hit. You know you have the pitcher coming up next. You know the D-backs got nobody up in the pen. Ian Kennedy's throwing outstanding baseball. He did fire a strike, although it was on the outside corner. Owen won the count. That one dives low. I'll also say too that you know, as an American League club coming into a National League ballpark to play. Sometimes the pitchers don't really know that to navigate through a lineup. They're used to pitching with DHs. Every guy can hit. So you see this guy, number eight hitter, you're you're just focused to go after him. You're not worried about trying to, you know, navigate yourself through a lineup because you got the pitcher coming up next. Good point. Right handers against Dunsing this year hitting 324. Left hander is just 240. He has never faced the Arizona Diamondbacks prior to tonight. And as you mentioned, just a couple of hitters have seen him.
Kelly thought about it, didn't. Kelly with a big hit the other night. Love to get one right here. You know, it's key right now, hitting with runners in scoring position. That's what Kirk Gibson looks at. Really starts there for his hitters. If you hit buck 98 for Kirk Gibson, you will win favor if you're hitting 350 with runners in scoring position as part of that buck 98. He wants you hitting right now. Broke his bat, dumps it into left field. Next maybe come on down. Kelly Johnson picks up a big base hit. I mean a big one. And we're tied at one. Just make contact for a guy who's over. 50 strikeouts. He didn't strike out that time. Well, you're exactly right. Against a tough lefty, he's throwing a break of ball down and away. It's a slider. Kelly just trying to make contact, like you said, and just cued that ball into short left field. One hop on the infield and gets by Floof out there, and Nady comes in to score. That's great. That's got to make you feel good as a hitter. Boy, good for Johnson. Boy, that's just nine RBIs for him. Ian bunts it the other way. I couldn't tell. Kelly made a really aggressive turn at first. And as he hit that bag, I couldn't tell if he stumbled. Oh, he did stumble, though. He did probably a good thing because that ball came in and nailed the cutoff, man. And Kelly had a hustle to get back in there. There's a little bit of irony in that stumble around the bag, by the way. He was laughing harder than anyone and his manager earlier today. Far and away harder than anyone. Rolling on the ground. One and one the count. So you laugh like that and then this happens. You're laughing at Gibby. You're laughing. Up. <laughs> you think Gibby will let him have it later? With a hug and a slap on the back, he'll let him have it. Because he <laughs> got a hit with the runner in scoring position. That's right. One and one the count. One and two the count and the hard thing for Kelly Johnson is that the video of Gibson is you know from up at like a security camera or a high home camera. We had about nine cameras on you doing that Kelly. Well it's a dual feed so maybe a few a few less than that. One and two the count. No escaping the cameras. That pitch is low. Tied it up. A run on three hits for both these clubs. And the count two and two on the pitcher, Kennedy. One of 17 this year. One of 18 after the strikeout in the third inning. Right back through the box. A little flip. Nice play by Plouffe. Good for Kelly Johnson. A timely hit. Oh boy, he had a lot of fun earlier today. I mean, his manager. Oh, Kelly goes down on the ground. Oh, <laughs> laughing. Whoa, who's laughing now, pal? <laughs>
Mercedes game summary and a changeup he wished he could have back. Michael Kadire with the inspiration of Harmon Killebrew knocks one out of here and then the pitching and the defense took over. Kennedy has been steamrolling and I mean steamrolling ten in a row sat down these Minnesota Twins on the flip side Dunsing Onich. Big time breaking balls and then a little broken bat dunker that crawled through the infield off the bat of Kelly Johnson. Plates Xavier Nady who comes around to score our Mercedes Benz game summary and between the half inning. Yeah, Matt Williams. Yeah, yeah. Well you were laughing hard earlier weren't you. Somebody put a face out there. That one is fouled off Dunsing up into the seats it goes. I tell you what. Giving Kelly a hard time and Kennedy he's not getting business from anyone he's ace like again. But what we've learned about Kelly Johnson through what has been one of the most forgettable six weeks he's ever had as a professional. Is that he's handled himself very well. And that's a good example right there that smile is good to see. Yeah I mean he really is a professional. And he comes out here and he works hard all the time. You know he's still very pleasant around everybody you know he knows he's struggling. Everyone knows he's struggling but. You know when you have a guy that acts like that and comes out and does all the extra work puts all the time and the effort into trying to get himself better you got everyone trying to support you. It's the guys that don't do that or the guys that you don't really care about. Maybe the guys that struggle and then bark at the media after they struggle. West high speed internet high speed pitch. Dunsing hitting 94 miles an hour Kennedy 92. And if you'll remember Kelly did an interview with us in San Francisco in the midst of his struggles and addressed about six questions deep his struggles very openly and honestly. You hope it ends yesterday for him. Yeah, He's a stand up guy and he'll figure it out. Chipper Jones telling us a very good friend of Kelly Johnson's he and Kelly rode to the ballpark together the other day. And he said Kelly is a guy that I have always felt could at times think so much that he could think himself into a slump. Hot shot right there is Nady. Looked like a hockey goalie. Denard Span is erased, and the the beat goes on for Kennedy. And Span, he's really oh, that's the ball right. hard now. He's got a base hit and two smashes. One robbed by Bloomquist. This one, <laughs> you know, brought down by Nady. My goodness. Twelve in a row sat down. That's right. He drove a triple, a sure triple into the gap that Bloomquist took away. Again, Kennedy getting right to strike one. Trevor Plouffe rolled into a 6-4-3 double play. Popped up a bunt to the pitcher. Swing and a miss at a changeup. A moment ago, Miguel Montero had a weapon coming his way. Watch Span on the follow through. Even though it's accidental and not firm that doesn't feel good. No. We saw that last week against the it was the Braves the catcher got hit. In the, no it was uh, it's against San Diego the with yeah. Galarraga hitting Armando Galarraga. And luckily that only hit Montero in the mask didn't get him in the helmet or the, the ear right there. High drive well struck left field a changeup is belted out of here. Third home run of the year for Trevor Plouffe, the young 24 year old. He homered in Minnesota, or I should say, he homered in Oakland as well for Minnesota. So starting to heat up with the power. Well, he knew that ball was gone as soon as it left his bat. The changeup. And look at him down there, stayed on it, and he just stayed with that ball and he knew it was gone. You don't see Ian Kennedy give up too many home runs on a changeup. Big swing tonight. He's given up two. Two home runs both on the changeup. Now mind you Kennedy not part of the long ball brigade that Arizona has dealt out with the pitching staff. He had only given up three coming in all year. Over the outside and mind you Kennedy is. If you look at the numbers a bit more of a, a fly ball pitcher. So it's not as if. 
He's a guy that's Derek Lowe on the ground. Curveball. Ruble rolls it foul. Twins really don't hit that many home runs in both their runs tonight. Well, they've got to score to win anyway, these Diamondbacks. Now they just have to score two because they trail it by one. Two big homers from the visitors from Minnesota. Six by the score of two to one. Willie Bloomquist set to lead things off here. And guys, I've been on hammy watch the last three weeks when he was on the DL every day. I talked to Willie about how is that hamstring the other day. He said, Brad, it's good. We don't need to talk about it anymore. You know, here's a guy that got up to such a great start. And he was just chomping at the bit to be back. And it's nice to have him back. Let off the game with a single need to get some offense going right now. I mean, Brad, were you literally like knocking on his door on a Sunday morning? Yes, I was all over it. 24 seven. The hammy watch. Well, I've never heard of Hammy Watch. <laughs> we should get that sponsor. Here's Willie Bloomquist as we spoke up. Boy, taking it right off the dirt just in case he makes the play anyway. Don't forget about our good friends with the Arizona Lottery. If you're attending tomorrow's game, stop by the Arizona Lottery kiosk outside the team shop. Pick up a free D backs game ticket and enter to win a Luis Gonzalez meet and greet when you purchase $10 worth of any Arizona Lottery tickets. 7 10 again tomorrow a 7 10 first pitch not 5 10 and this is only just a handful more than it's back to 5 10 every single home Saturday but tomorrow night 7 10 is the start of the ball game just a couple of those this season television based Fox Network and so for some they might like that you know a chance to come a little bit later in the day and a lot of your kids have sports so 7 10 tomorrow night. One and one the count Ryan Roberts. Roberts really likes hitting that ball the opposite way with the lefty on the mound. Denard span out center field just shade him a little bit towards that way. And we have seen Roberts turn. Especially on some off speed pitches from left handed pitchers. Ryan the lion. The one two. Late swing almost as if surprised that a fastball was coming had to react. And again an off speed pitch in his head. And yeah, I'm going look like it had a little hop maybe a little cut to it. They're trying to come way inside. Rene Rivera sitting up in there. He nails his target and gets him to swing over the top of this one. It's good pitching that's going on between both Kennedy and Dunsing right now. Well, and these Minnesota pitchers pitch better, even though their ballpark at home is a pitcher's ballpark, the new Target Field. 
as that one is high. They haven't done much at all at home. Their team ERA in that pitcher friendly ballpark is over six. On the road, it's not so spectacular, but it's still two runs better at four. Just enough to the high drive center field. Going back is Span. Shy of the track. He's got it. Off the end of the bat. Settled right through that inning. Here we go a moment ago. Justin Upton with the fly out to center field. Well, he knew that Justin nice. Upton had a full extension on that swing and just missed it. Just got a little bit underneath it. Morneau takes a pitch over the outside corner. He has not been the old Justin of the last five seasons. From 06 to 2010, 126 homers, nearly 500 RBIs as it bounces in there. He's climbing up that all time twins list in a lot of categories. Second best slugging percentage in twins history, a 506. Well, when the twins have Morneau and Maurer both healthy, you know, it's the modern day version of the Eminem boys, Panel and Maris. As those guys can rake it for power and for average. Right back through the box in the center field. It's a single. And by the way, number one all time in slugging percentage for the Twins, Harmon Killebrew. As Morneau reaches. His first hit. Now, Morneau in Oakland, by the way, they just stopped off for a quick two gamer in Oakland and they swept it. He was five of nine with a homer and three RBI, so some confidence. He's got a little bit more swagger in his step. In that locker room today. Once he gets going, look out. Michael Kadire. Kadire starting to heat up also. Ground ball, diving play, Roberts. Can he get balance long? Ball? Got him! How in the world did he find himself back in throwing position? He twisted up like a pretzel. When he went to throw this ball, it was amazing because he really didn't have time to set and look and, and see where he was going to throw the ball. Tremendous play, backhand, short hop, comes up off balance and just slings it over there. A great scoop by Nady. Not an easy play on both ends of that. The Home Depot doing more on defense. There's that twist I'm talking about. He looked like Tim Lincecum pitching as he threw that ball. <laughs> he did. He's limber. I mean, literally. That looked like Timmy Lincecum, old number 55, and then he thanks his first baseman. Yeah, well, you know, the pit, Ian Kennedy's thanking him. He really picked him up right there. <sighs> Good defense all the way around. Danny Valencia. And we 
talk about those couple of homers that the Twins have hit tonight. That's the story. The league average team has already hit 38 homers in baseball. Twins have hit 21. 21 total. That's it. I mean, that's the D backs, what, 47? 2 0 oh, the count. Danny takes a pitch that is away. There's that cut fastball slider, if you will. 3 0 oh, the count to Valencia. Now, this year, Kennedy has been excellent with runners in scoring position. 176 average against. He's only given up one home run. The two runs he's given up tonight have been by the home run. But this is where he has really shined this year. Being able to turn it up a notch when he has to. That one is belted into center field. Young is tracking. He's got it. It helps when you're shining in this situation to have gloves like he has behind him this inning. This inning's all about the leather. Ryan Roberts first, Xavier Nady second, and now CY out in center field. Robs this ball. A lot of center fielders are not going to get to this ball. This ball is stroked hard, and he runs over there, backhands it as he's going. Yeah, you see those kind of plays behind you as a pitcher. You go, just give me the ball. Let me throw a low strike. That runner remains in scoring position for Delman Young. Quick for you. Kirk Gibson makes a lot out of hitting with runners in scoring position. For you, that number for a pitcher, is that indicative? Oh, it's indicative. You see all the good pitchers, all the successful pitchers are able to dial it up when they have to. You get a little tougher. That guy in the booth next to us, Burt Blylevin. You know, when you had guys on second or third, that curveball seemed to get a little bit better of his. One won the count. What's the key? Is it feeding off the aggressive nature of the hitter? That's part of it. That's part of it. And also being able to have something a little bit extra in your tank. Some guys will focus a little bit better on locations. Some guys will try to, you know, they'll try to turn it up a little bit. He ran a fastball up and in. Young loved it, but he could not come in. He stranded that runner. Boy, all around the diamond. Great defensive plays. Roberts and Young running him down. But this, my goodness, twisted up and limber. Yikes! Game show Todd Walsh, Joe Borowski, Joe, par for the course around here. Another tight game. How do you see this so far? Todd, so many things happen throughout the course of a game that have an effect on it. In closer games, sometimes it's just one or two things. I'll take a closer look at some of those things that you might overlook that have a huge on the outcome. Hmm. Would uh, the umpire squeezing the strike zone have anything to do with that? Uh, I think that's better left to a booth discussion. Back sure to be insulted by that or not, but the booth yeah. discussion. Out of here. Stephen Drew with the homer. And we're tied.
2-2 ball game. Drew with his third home run of the year. The balls are flying out of Chase Field tonight. This ball's out over the plate again. Remember we talked about going away, away, away. Did not come inside. Drew was looking out there and drilled that ball out of the park. So now Chris Young. Shot down the line. Rolling to the corner. It gets under the glove. It will bang around in that triangle. Chris will think of three just in case. It's a double. Tied at two. An extra base hit. And again, he leads the National League in extra base hits. That's 24. Okay, when he hits that ball, the ball jumps off his bat. Catches this, trying to go away on him. He misses inside, missed way off the off his target right there. And Chris Young made him pay. Drills this ball into that left field corner. Five hits for both teams. We're dead even on that line score. Miguel is 0 for 2, a strikeout and a ground out. And they're creeping in for the bunt at 30 squares. Pops it up. And it's in there. No play made. Okay, this is where you need execution now. You're called upon to sacrifice bunt to get Drew over to third base. You got to execute. You got to get that ball down. You got to get Drew or CY over to third base. You got to get him there. These are the little things that don't quite show up. But you have to get them done. Arizona with 16 sacrifice bunts. That puts him in the bottom half of the National League. Seems like St. Louis and Atlanta have 26 and 27. That one, boy, could have been called a strike. One and one the count. But just a lot of business going on around the plate. And it's all right if you even bunt the ball fairly hard to the third baseman. That's all you do is you have to make him bunt, catch the ball, not the pitcher. Takes outside, does Montero. Two balls and one strike the count. Big picture, Arizona's attempted just 22. They've been successful 16 times. About three quarters of the time they're successful. See Valencia at third base. He's going to have one eye on Chris Young at second base. He's not going to just going to look at the batter. He's going to look at both. Your job as a pitcher right here is to break towards the third base line, because that's you know where the butt where he's trying to bunt it. Oh, he's swinging. Surprise you? So he did surprise me. I thought in this situation he's going to try to get that bunt down. Maybe after that first attempt, Gibby didn't like what he saw. He's going to give him a chance to roll over the top of one, pull that ball to the right side. Opening weekend of interleague play. The 2 2. In on the hands, fouls that one off. Last year, the Chicago White Sox were the best team in baseball interleague at 15 and 3. The Pirates, the worst at 2 and 13. Arizona, 6 and 9 last year in interleague play. And the Twins, 8 and 10. How about the Twins, though, overall in interleague play? 140 wins and 106 losses. And historically, they've been very good. 2-2. Two -two. Out front. Did he dump it in there? He did. It kicks away. Let's watch Chris Young. Matt Williams will stop him. That ball kicked away on an attempt by Kubel. Look forward to seeing this replay and getting Candy's take. But it didn't get by him. Had a shot of catching that ball. Kubo was caught right in the middle of this. Montero trying to pull the ball. Anything he can do to pull the ball, and he does. An outside pitch loops it into right field. Kubel comes running in, and he's lucky. He's lucky that ball didn't get by him. That ball gets by him. Montero gets the third base easily, and CY scores. Great point that Tom Candiotti is making to us, folks, though, about the efforts to pull the ball there, at least to get that runner to third. 
Got to talk it over now. Rick Anderson, the pitching coach, comes out. Anderson's been there for quite some time. He has been there since 2002. It's been a long time prior to that in AAA. Well, you got to love the way this inning has started now with the home run by Drew. Just electrified to everything in here at Chase Field. And then CY follows it up with this a smash in that left field corner. Montero battles, knowing he's trying to get Young over to third base. And tries to pull an outside pitch that was down and boosts it in the right field. So this has been a great start to an inning right now. Watching Chris Young. It's a hard read at second base. Am I going to tag? No. He sees the ball falls, but he sees that Kubel keeps it in front of him. So he gets over to third base. Maddie Williams right there stopping him. Eyes on that play all the way. The Diamondbacks have won three in a row. Then again, so have the Twins. Arizona has won five of their last six. Trying to get on, as their manager calls it, a bit of a roll. And get closer to 500. We have a rule in this booth. We don't talk about standings until you're a 500 team. Nady fights it off and into the seats it goes. Now some action now. Perkins, what a year he is having. Oh boy, tough left hander, and then Alex Burnett. And now Aaron Heilman begins to warm as well. Looks like it's getting to be a battle. The bullpens right now. The D-backs will take that battle. Bouncing ball to the hole and into left field. Arizona leads it. Xavier Nady has been the middle of everything tonight. His double started things in the fifth. He shoots it through the hole again. Contact baseball for these Diamondbacks. They lead it. Four hits in a row. Infield playing in right there. Halfway in anyway. And, and Nady finds that little gap between third and short. And gets it in the left field for a base hit. And again, these guys now are making contact. And because of some of those contact hits, they have really paid off for the Diamondbacks. Well, it all changed really quickly for Brian Matthew Dunsing. He had owned Arizona for the early parts of this ball game. They chipped away, they chipped away. Tough lefty is on. We'll tell you about him when we come back. On hand tonight, and they're having fun at the ballpark, and some big contributions from the first base position over the last couple of evenings, and that is good to see because it has been a black hole prior to that. Stephen Drew with a homer starts the inning, and certainly frustration that ties it up, and then they start chipping away. Nady shoots it through the hole, part of four consecutive hits in a row. And that's where we stand. Call to the bullpen, answered by a talented left-hander. Glenn Perkins, who is having a big year, another left-hander sits in Dunsing. 
Perkins young man out of the University of Minnesota. Lays it down Kelly Johnson the play is the third they got it. Boy he got back to the bag and you talked about earlier. Tom Candiotti the pitcher's job to get to that line if Perkins is not going in the right direction forget it. Well you're exactly right on that. Your job as a pitcher is to break towards that third base line. As a bunter, you got to make the third baseman field that ball. And Kelly gets a bunt down nicely, but he doesn't have enough angle to it. And Perkins is able to catch that ball and get it right to his third baseman for the force. So that moves Nady up to second. Here is Ian Kennedy to finish the thought on Nady and Moran in that first base position. The last couple of nights, they've been really producing. One out for Kennedy, who will look to move him along. That pitch is inside. Eight of their last 15. You put the two of them together, and there's now what looks to be, unfortunately for Russell Brannion, as you see the great numbers for Perkins. But what appears to be forming at first base is a two headed monster for Kirk Gibson. The platoon. Drops down a bunt. He makes him leave the area on a cross. That's what you do, right? Make the third baseman leave your spot. They leave it to the pitcher, right? Hmm. No, but he did it exactly right. He got himself in the good bunting position, got his bat out front, had a little angle to it, caught the ball out front because that's the only way you're going to be able to get that ball down to third baseline, and he executed it just perfectly. So now Willie Bloomquist. Perkins is one bright spot of that bullpen this year. His .82 ERA is the third best amongst relievers in the entire American League. He's pitched a lot of innings, a lot of strikeouts to go along with. Bloomquist buckles out of there. That was coming in about 93 miles an hour. Willie's a tough out. The one thing about Willie is you know he's going to make contact. He's going to put the ball in play. Now they'll go ahead and put him on. For that very reason and give Roberts a chance to really do some damage and don't you know Ryan Roberts is relishing this chance. A little surprising on this move right here. Why. Well first of all when you you, you walk a guy to load the bases. You have no wiggle room at all. Okay. And in a situation like this, Ron Gardenhire is figuring that Willie Bloomquist is hitting much better than Ryan Roberts. Bloomquist just coming back into the lineup. And trying to feel big league pitching out. Good point. So the bases are loaded. As Candy said, you got to throw strikes now. And here is Ryan Roberts. Hitting 409 with runners in scoring position with two outs, it's even better. And obviously, Ron Gardner is not going by the numbers; he's going by feeling. Change up. Yikes! That was nasty. <laughs> it's nasty. I mean, nasty. And again, there's a manager, a grizzled manager, who's going with his guy on the mound. It doesn't matter; he wants his pitcher on the mound, and he has been outstanding this year for Gardy. Twins bullpen an ERA of nearly five this year. One of the highest in the game. Ground ball, foul ball. The blow up bullpens are in Detroit and Baltimore and Houston and then in Minnesota. Any loyal Diamondback fans out there, raise your hand. Do you remember last year? You can feel for Twins fans, can't you? But for the grace of J.J. Putz and David Hernandez go the Diamondbacks bullpen. Made everyone else better. 0 oh and 2 the count. In. It was show me up up look work that ball up in the zone 94 miles an hour. He's got an excellent change up. We saw that the first pitch that he threw. I would expect him to go right back to it. One and two the count. Drives it in the left center field. He may just empty those bases. 
One run is in. Another comes around. Matt Williams says, come on down. They pitched around to get to Roberts. And Roberts cleaned them up. And look how fired up he is at second base. He took it personal, as he should have. He said Ron Gardhart did not go by the numbers right there. He went by a field. And it backfired on him. No stride right there by Roberts. Saw the ball. Just trying to make contact, and he drilled it to left center. Great at bat. And again, you're talking about a pitcher that has been lights out. A .82 ERA. Now, he allowed a couple of his teammates are on as well. But Ryan Roberts, as you said, took it personal. Was up to the challenge and a bang on the head. Ah, Tatman. Very questionable decision by a fabulous manager and Ron Gardenhire really breaks the back of the twins. It really did. I mean, watching Gardy's expression over there, he you know he went by a gut feeling and it backfired on him. But to walk really Bloomquist to get the Ryan Roberts. Roberts just been tremendous with guys in scoring position. And he comes through again. Alex Burnett now goes to work. Stunning stuff. The right hander takes the rock. He's got an ERA of about six and a half in 12 appearances this year. Burnett. He'll rock and fire a little bit more on Ryan Roberts. We bring Brad back. And what do you have Brad? Yeah earlier today Kirk Gibson was asked by a reporter if he felt that Roberts was a classic overachiever. And he said absolutely not. He doesn't think he's even close to reaching his potential. In fact they were standing next to one another during BP the other day. And Gibby just told him don't relax. You haven't made it yet. You know, keep working like you did to get here, and uh, it's paying off. Yeah, good stuff. I don't think Roberts will ever relax again after admitting that he did last year. I mean, admitting that he took the game for granted. I don't think he ever will again. A valuable lesson learned. You know, and he worked hard. He all off season, he worked hard. He comes into spring training, worked hard as hard as anybody else. Had the best batting average in all of baseball in spring training. Earned his way on the club. And now he's, he's earned himself a, a nice little spot, uh, starting job over third base right now. Never as a player benefited more from a bum knee that of Jeff Blums and a guy like Ryan Roberts. Ryan Roberts would be one of the aces really hitting well. They're all hitting well all those aces in Reno but I, I don't care what he hit this spring. There was not a spot for him on the club with a healthy Jeff Blum. No there was not. You know, and, but that's why you keep pressing forward. Because one thing that you have to understand that there's everybody is looking at you. Every scout is looking at you. Not just your own organization. It's a great point. So you got to play hard and you're going to force yourself on somebody's roster. And luckily for the D-backs it was the D-backs roster. One and two the count. Upton doesn't chase. Micah Owings 
makes his journey back to the big leagues tomorrow night the right hander that won a lot of big games in 2007 for Arizona and got a lot of big hits takes on Scott Baker Baker with a 3.99 ERA so Micah Owings back in the majors tomorrow night Upton pops it up to the right side Ryan Roberts he was challenged John Gardenhire thought this is the guy I don't think can beat me he thought wrong. Ian Kennedy is uh, a gal with the sharp hat. Kennedy wears his down low over his brow, hides under it, and hides in front of that glove. That classic college pitcher attack. He pitched at USC. Kurt Schilling used to hide behind that glove when Dave, he was out on the mound. Dave Stewart, same way. Dave Stewart, the same way as you said. Curveball in a dandy. Well, when Kennedy gets that stomp, it's a confident walk around the mound, but it is firm. And he moves quickly and he can feel it. Like that. I mean, that's that's an A plus pitch on 0 2. And he has a, that swagger, that confidence. He's fun to watch work because you see this curveball. You see Candy, I think he's a guy that it could have worked with this stuff in generations back. Oh, there's no question. He's got tremendous stuff and he uses all four of his pitches. You know, he's a, he comes in very prepared. He's got a game plan. And the biggest thing for him is early in the game, command of his fastball. Once he gets that, he locks in. Now, this is a, a high draft pick. I mean, when we talk about Ian Kennedy, we're not talking about a guy that surprised a bunch of people. The New York Yankees picked him in with their first pick in 06. But as can happen in New York, they just couldn't wait around for him. You know, he, he really burst quickly onto the scene in 07, and they wanted that right away again. He had to develop. Boy, good at that by Ben Revere. Hangs around. The young man slaps that one on the ground. Had a chance to see him play a bit in the fall league, Ben Revere. Very talented, fast, good athlete, so look out. Looked like a little change up maybe got out in front of it pulled it but got it right in the right spot and you're right he's a little spark plug a lot of speed Luke Hughes now will pinch hit one long ball this year six to two is the score. 
That cut fastball jumps out of the zone. Kennedy with 91 pitches right now. Hughes, Australian born and raised from Perth, Australia, 26 years old. Had a great debut last year in Detroit as he fouls that one off. The next time you're at Chase Field, use your smartphone's Wi Fi to connect to digital D backs. Our new free portal that's available only inside Chase Field. Get free access to video replays, find a full menu of ballpark concessions, and purchase tickets directly from your phone. Breaking ball again. That's that cut fastball, and it's fouled off up and into the seats it goes. Hughes signed by the Twins back in 02 out of Australia. Played in the World Baseball Classic on a couple of occasions. And then his major league debut last year and homered in his first career at bat against Max Scherzer in Detroit. Kennedy makes quick work of him. He didn't read that resume part, so he just sends him back to the bench with a high fastball. Worked it right up the zone on him. You know, you, you have to be looking for the curveball right now from Kennedy at times, the changeup, and then all of a sudden he still has some pop on his fastball. 92 miles an hour up in the zone right by you. All right, Denard Span, one out. Twins first pick in 2002, Tampa Catholic High School. Fastball, 0 and 1 the count. Continues to get to strike one. Spans really had a nice night. He's been robbed twice. Got himself a base hit to start this game off. Curveball, nice job, Montero. A little unorthodox, but he still blocked it. Roberts because of the speed of span has to play even a couple steps in front of the bag. The outfield closes the gap up a little bit. It was really Bloomquist that headed towards the Geico sign and made that diving play earlier. Inside corner. But he is really mixing and matching. Fastballs in fastballs up pulling the string curveballs down. Cutters in on the hands. I mean, you just can't, as a hitter, you can't get into a rhythm with them. Talk about pitching IQ a lot. He's got it. Bouncing ball again. A great play. Span will beat Kennedy to the bag, but again, Denard Span, the victim of a nice play. Nady comes off the bag and gets the lead runner. Xavier Nady is very mobile over at first base. He doesn't just hang around the bag. He catches that ball with his momentum going to second base, quickly gets it to Drew, just in case there's a chance to get a double play. But with Span running, there's no way. Very difficult to double him up. The important thing is you got an out right there. Trevor Plouffe picked on a changeup from Kennedy and homered his third homer of the season. And he takes a fastball from Kennedy over the outside corner. Earlier in the game, Kennedy would not be getting that fastball right there. Sheeta was a little tight early in the game. He's loosened up quite a bit. As you predicted. You told us it would happen. Well, we had two pitchers out there that were throwing so many strikes. And as an umpire, you just have to get in that rhythm. And they, he finally did. In the corner, 0 and 2 of the count. He's gone outside, he's gone inside. They said hitters, you look at their eyes sometimes after pitches, and, you know, they're trying to guess with Kennedy. They can't quite figure him out. Leo 2. Fouled it straight back. You think about Ian as high as 116 pitches. He's gone seven or more innings, four of his nine starts. He threw that complete game shutout about 24 hours after the the birth of his daughter here recently. Fastball fouled off. 
Plouffe in the sixth inning picked on a change up to get it. Well, he's staying all hard stuff on him right now. This at bat. He's almost ready to throw the curveball. I don't think he's going to come back with that same pitch hit that home run on the changeup. Fastball. Luf was looking soft too. Good located fastball right on the outside corner down. The manager you're looking at your pitcher out there with the 103 pitches. And you're going this guy is still commanding the fastball down in the zone. Which means he's still strong. He still has his legs out there. Curveball, there it is. And boy, was that a dandy. A good snapping curveball down. Just missed, gave him a chance to get himself out. He'll poof held back on it. And again, he's into a very defensive part right now in, in at bat. He just doesn't know what's coming. Look out, fastball got away. And they wanted to come in, but that nearly took his helmet off. Well, that'll wake him up a little bit right there. Wasn't trying to come that far in. He was trying to come in, but ball got up, in, spun him out of there. <laughs> he really opened the plate up after that pitch. Curveball. Montero keeps it with him, so the runner is off to the races as the pitch comes home. Full count, two outs. You can see they swing around to right center field. A lot of room around the second base bag. What do we think at home, folks? What pitch here? This has been a, an interesting battle. You throw him something soft on 3 2? No, I think you throw him a strike. I think you just locate that fastball, outer third. You know, let him hit the ball. Three two fastball up and out of the zone and you know what this at bat is doing as it rolls on this is making Kirk Gibson's decision on a complete game. Unfortunately for Kennedy. Yes it is. And Luke's putting a pretty good at bat on him right now. Raising that pitch count up 107 right now. They usually don't send a pitcher out with a lead of four runs after 110 pitches. I was hoping it would go quick when it was at about 98. Three and two the count. Runner goes. Pitch again. Off speed on the ground. Foul ball. Next pitch, 11 pitches. Mr. Plouffe just got Kennedy out of the ball game. Yes, he did. In the next inning. As a pitcher, point, you start going. We talk about hitting all the time. What did it bat? You're seeing all these pitches. Well, as a pitcher, when you have a guy that's putting it a bat on you like Fluke is doing right now, you want to win this at bat. You want to make sure that you come out victorious on this after throwing all those pitches. He did not get the call. He did not get the inside corner. Did that chase him out of the ball game? Could have been strike three. Instead, it's to the showers for Ian Kennedy. And he understandably shows some emotion for the first time tonight. Boy, rightfully so, too. A great, I mean, here you are in the eighth inning. You've been around that plate all night long. And you make a great pitcher's pitch right there. And you don't get rewarded for it. That is a shame. And he is very upset, and rightfully so. The ace of the Arizona Diamondbacks has to hand the baseball away. And he didn't want to. A, a long look out to Tim Cheetah.
you by Southwest Airlines' new Rapid Rewards and Limited Rewards seats. No blackout dates. The new Quest five-year price lock promise. Visit quest.com slash promise for details. A very close pitch. Sends Ian Kennedy to the showers, and he was none too pleased. He'll stay top step, but still living it, and you can't blame him. I won't blame him one bit. That was a great pitch, and he's been around that plate all night long. And even if it's just a touchdown, I tell you, that pitch was right there. And Patterson physically is fine, but he opts to go with Heilman here. Here it is. Fastball. A little bit down, but boy, so close. So close. Got to have that call. Outside, 2 0, oh, the count. Nobody. I think this is one of those things they're going to have to review. That ball was hit so high. I thought Chris Young had gotten underneath it. He was going to catch that ball until you heard the clang up there. Well, they're going to review it. Oh no, that's well below the line. That ball's in play. Well below the line, so no homer there. Well, while they review, if they'd like to warm someone up in the bullpen, there's certainly plenty of time. They'll quickly see that that was not a homer, correct? Yeah, absolutely not. No question about it, but it's one of those things you need to review. Well, you heard that big bang. I thought it had gotten out of here. Then you look down for the umpires, and no one made a call. They'll get together. There we go. It's to replay well handled. And a quick explanation. Being offered by Jeff Nelson for Ron Gardenhire. You love instant replay because there's nothing you can say at that point, and you're technically not permitted to once they look at it. So, a moment ago, Ian Kennedy thought he had thrown strike three. Two pitches later, a ball nearly gets out of here and hits that balcony. And now Morneau swings and misses at a changeup. Well, this is where Heilman needs to get this out right here. All of a sudden now it's become a two run game one swing of the bat. And this game could be tied so you need to make some good quality pitches here. Oh and two the count. Diamondbacks lead it six to four. Into the catcher's minute it goes. Morneau fires that bat away. Ian Kennedy's ERA takes a hit. And a very close pitch makes this game close.
Banged it off the balcony just inside of that yellow line out there in right center field. Call to the bullpen, Kevin Slowey, who has served in the starting rotation. He goes to work. He has handled first batters just fine. Four of five he has gotten. New catcher behind the plate, Butera, takes over. Drew Butera. Slowey's job simple. We always talk about this in a two or a one run game. Keep it right where it is. Your team's got a little momentum now. Need that shutdown inning. You know, after your team scores some runs, no matter what side you're on, you, as a pitcher, you go out there, you got to put up that zero. Like you said, keep that momentum. 2 and 0 the count. Stephen Drew breaks his bat, finds center field real estate, and Drew with a base hit. David Hernandez serving as the closer tonight, warming in the pen. Physically, everything fine with JJ Putz. Well, he's got a scheduled night off tonight. He's been working a lot. Hernandez didn't pitch yesterday, two innings the day before. So he should be ready to go. And for the D backs offense right now, you try to score some more runs. It is time to add on. Four runs, seven hits, and no errors for the Twins. For the Diamondbacks, six runs on nine hits and no errors. Young tonight. Doubled and scored. Grounded out to short. He has struck out. Just in case, keeping an eye on Stephen Drew. Interleague weekend underway. Only one true National League game, and that is Milwaukee and Colorado. With the extra two teams in the National League, they're tied at four in the 12th inning. Pushes that bunt, has Slowey off the mound. Nice play, but the bunt effective as well. Runner in scoring position. But don't forget tomorrow Fox Saturday baseball back in prime time on the East Coast when the Athletics take on the Giants for the Cubs head to Fenway to square off with the Red Sox tomorrow's prime time on the East Coast telecast begins at four check local listings for the game and start time in your area. Nice productive out right there. I got see why was button for a hit right there but. It serves as a sacrifice also. His job well done getting Drew to second base and in scoring position. Breaking ball high. Pop back this way. Candy nearly had a good try there, pal, with that repaired shoulder and all. Good effort, but it's down below. I was extending. Be careful. We don't want to have you back on the shelf. <laughs> one and one the count. Tom Candiotti, Darren Sutton, Brad Steinke down below. Glad to have you with us. Trust your week's been a good one. Miguel Montero takes advantage of the sacrifice bunt. Come on down, Cooper. Fires it to the plate over the head of the cutoff man Montero in there. No cutoff man no common sense and Arizona catches in. You know you talked about that before about the Minnesota Twins not doing the little things this year. That's one of those things that don't show up missing a cutoff man. Would have been a close play at the play. Kubel's got a very good arm but he airmailed it. And Butera had to go a little bit up the first baseline to catch that ball. Montero heads up right there, keeps going to second base. Drew scores and he gets into second base. A bang bang play. Sure is nice getting another run right there. 7 4 now the score. Nady, big swing, drops that back shoulder. 
And that's an easy chance for Denard Span with a hop and a skip. He makes the play and gets the cutoff hand. Some fun interleague series this weekend. Chicago Cubs at the Boston Red Sox for the first meeting in 93 years and hammering away 15 5 was Boston. The Reds at Cleveland Indians, first place doing great work, and Cleveland won that ball game. Yankees and Mets, they go toe to toe. The Mets won that one 2 to 1. The A's at the San Francisco Giants, a lot of pitching. That game 1 1, no surprise, in the sixth inning. One we didn't mention the Detroit Tigers taking a journey to Pittsburgh not any sort of a geographic rivalry and Pittsburgh hammering Detroit 10 to 1. They clubbed them. <laughs> that one sails up and out of there. Washington and Baltimore two geographically very close cities. Washington beating Baltimore 17 to 5. The 2-0 to Kelly Johnson. Kelly Johnson in the right center field. Toward the gap. That one is down. Montero will score. Johnson hustling on around. Thinking about three. Stops at second with the double. Kelly with a good night. He's been on three times. Single in an RBI. Double in an RBI. Fielder's choice. Run scored and good for the second baseman who has been struggling all season long. Boy, I love it. You know, after the Twins score two runs to the top of the eight, D-backs answer right back with so far two runs in this inning. But Kelly Johnson, you have to love the way he's hitting the ball and swinging the bat tonight. He has really struggled this year, but he's coming up big time tonight. On and he will hit. Burroughs had a pinch hit opportunity, and it was first plate appearance since 2006 as he has made a long journey back from the minor leagues. The call to the bullpen, by the way, for these Minnesota Twins is answered by Phil Dumatrade on for the third time. This is a gentleman that has been around the block, certainly, and has had time in the major leagues. 44 appearances in his career. Triple A for Detroit last year, the entire season. So he has bounced around. Bros. Kevin Towers drafted him very high, number one pick. And when he drafted him, that was back in '98. Had his time in the major leagues and then slipped out of the game and slipped personally, as he has shared with us. And he takes a fastball that is high. Had big numbers in AAA, sharing a role down there. And the at bat he had 
Yes, the other night again his first since 2006 when he had an at bat last night to be specific May 4th 2006. Oh, what a gap. But you love the story you love the perseverance. You love the way guys can fight back. You know, get themselves back into the big leagues. He was hitting 386 in AAA Reno. Burroughs fights that one off, and that one ends up in the seats. Said he was making personal choices that were constantly taking him down the wrong path. Was a hitter in the minor leagues who began his career all the way up through the system. Started at 18 years old, a Little League World Series hero as well. That pitch right at the kneecap, so three and one the count for Sean Burroughs. Of course, Father Jeff Burroughs had a fine major league career. Most valuable player award as well. Sean in on the knuckles, pops it up. He cannot pick up that Texas leaguer. So a couple of more runs and an add on 8 for the score. Juan Gutierrez looking to close it down. Our APS Energy All-Star on Ian Kennedy tonight. I love the way he pitched tonight. Those numbers aren't indicative of even how well he did pitch those four Ernie's. He gave up two home runs and that was it. He bared down in the clutch when he had to. He mixed up his pitches. He had good pop all the way through the game. Command of his fastball was excellent. I think it's just another typical Ian Kennedy outing that we're getting so used to seeing time and time again. He shies away from being called an ace and I understand that he's a traditional type and a humble down to earth young man but he's the ace of this staff isn't he. Yes. And you know he was named the opening day starter out of spring training and he has lived up to everything he's matched up with guys like Lincecum you know top of the rotation guys throughout the league he's held his own and he's beaten those guys I mean he, he was it when San Francisco he matched up against Lincecum a zero zero game. Yep. You know, so he's got the ability to be able to match up with anybody. Cole Mentor, boy, was he great last night. That's 12 shutout innings for him. Hudson has really pieced things back together. And Joe Saunders has had two quality starts in a row as well. Not statistically, you know, we don't buy the quality star. We got a little gum issue here for Joe. Well, you watch the way he throws. He's been aggressive. He's been throwing strikes. And, you know, and when you start pitching like that, good things are going to happen. Joe and Cole Mentor will share that doubleheader on Tuesday in Colorado. As both will be starters. We'll have both games for you next Tuesday. That ought to be fun. And uh, I think you, you're the one that's invited to be the analyst that day, right? Me and you, buddy. All right. So we'll call a, a couple of ball games. We'll, Tom and I will spend all day with you. <laughs> Juan Gutierrez, this is a good opportunity. Now, 
with the occasional struggles. An arm like this will help you get out of those struggles. Got a great arm. You know, his fastball's a little straight, but he got that in a good spot up and in. Good hire couldn't do anything with that one. Didn't get the outside corner. Well, you know, it hasn't been there. It's, it's you thought he really opened up there with both starting pitchers, but you know, that one right there could have been called strike three very easily also. Breaking ball, ground ball. That's Steven. One step to his right. On across. And that is the first out here in the ninth inning. Two big outs to get. And the important one is getting that first guy. Once you get the first out of the inning, you know, it really sets up the whole inning as a pitcher. Well, the big goot, as we like to call him up here, has not given up a run in May. So that's not so bad. I like that. The big goot. It's not very creative or inventive. But he's a big fella. Well, the one thing I really like about Goody is that he's got a terrific breaking ball. I mean, it sizzles. High fly ball, Danny Valencia. The home run bug bites, and that is something that bit him 13 times last year. That is the third home run allowed by Gutierrez. As Valencia homers for the fourth time this season. Well, like we said, you know, he he is he's got good velocity on his fastball, you know, but it's straight. He opens up, it's easy to pick up. And when he leaves it over the plate like that, guys are going to be ready for it. That's the difference between a guy like him and Coleman are throwing. You can't pick that ball up, and Coleman's location is so much better that he's not going to get hit like that. And they start playing catch a little bit again, does David Hernandez. There we go. Why not right down the middle? One and one the count. Delman Young. 21 homers, 112 RBIs last year. Bouncing ball and it's foul. That's Scott Older in the third base coach's box. Just throw your hat at it. That, that ought to work. Kind of a desperate move there. I think I'd have to step on his hat first before I gave it back to him. The one two. Curve ball had him reaching. Steven fielding. Bare handed. Hey! Not in time. Tell you the what a terrific play. Even though they didn't get him. Almost like the swinging bunt. But Drew comes flying in from shortstop. Bare hands that ball in one motion like a third baseman. Looked like a Brooks Robinson over there and almost got him at first base. You know, they, even though that's going to go as a hit, he's not an out. It was a good call and all that. But what a terrific play by Drew. Kirk Gibson in a safe situation. And tonight, David Hernandez is his closer. You have your guy warmed up. Why not bring him in if he's warmed up? And an opportunity to reward Hernandez with a save. One run allowed, 8 5 to score. David, the Sacramento native, goes to work.
two major league saves. None of them this year. His last one, June 15th of last year. He has been great this season. He's been lights out. I mean, what a find. What a great deal Kevin Towers put together to get this young man. He's been a, had a blazing fastball. His slider has been excellent. You know, he tax hitters. Hernandez in his last 10 appearances has given up just one earned run. He faces Drew Butera who drives him into right center field toward the gap. Up to the young both chasing that one will roll all the way to the wall. Young is out front. Alger says come on down. It's getting interesting around here. Eight to six is the score. Butera looked like a man who knew he'd get a strike. He got it and he hammered it. You know, the Twins might have a little familiarity with Hernandez. Hernandez being in the American League with Baltimore. But he looked like, to me, he just tried to meet that ball out over the plate. And he did. He served it into right center field for an easy double. Drives in a run. And now what's happened is the Twins have got the tying run up to the plate. Matt Tolbert takes a fastball that buries inside. 1 0 oh, the count. There have only been a couple of appearances in his career for Hernandez against Minnesota, but also spring training in the same area as well when you're Baltimore and Minnesota. And the Grapefruit League, so you see him then as well. 2 0 oh, the count. And you end up seeing in the same leagues coming up together in the minor leagues back east. But just two appearances in the big leagues against Minnesota. One run allowed. Three and zero. Oh, the count is overthrowing now because he was touched up. Well, you want to, don't want to put the tying run on base. He's going to have to work himself all the way back now. Down three zero, and it, it's a different thing when you're all of a sudden near the guy at the very back of the end of the bullpen on that particular day as the closer. You know you have nobody there to have your back. Three and one the count. Up, ball four. Tying runs are on now in front of Denard Spann, who has been on the baseball tonight. Different pitcher, different style, but he has been seeing it tonight. Yeah, he really has been. He's been. He's put together some very good at bats all night long. So right now it's a good visit by Charles Nagy. He's going to come out. He's going to settle down his hurler, you know, in his very calming demeanor, and, and just say, "Look at you guys. Just focus right here. Let's focus on some low strikes. Let's concentrate on getting a ground ball right here." Striking what has gone on statistically tonight with this bullpen, because when you look at the last three weeks, they haven't given up anything. I mean, literally, we this doesn't even resemble the Diamondbacks full kind of last year. And tonight, they've given up, well, two runs and two thirds. Look at what they had done in their previous 17 games. Four earned runs in 50 innings pitched. That well, shows you how important it was putting those tack on runs in on the bottom of the eighth inning. Span fouls it off. That bullpen phone ringing again. You can hear the, the cricket sound in the background. That loud ring. Maybe JoJo. It is Joe Patterson. We thought we might see him earlier against Kubel. Well, one thing we know about Joe Patterson, it doesn't take him many pitches to get loose. Span has rolled into a double play just twice this year. Just twice. And Hernandez skews as a fly ball pitcher anyway. So if he gets it, he'll be a bit on the lucky side. He'll take it. David with a 1 1. He broke his bat as he rolls that one foul. So Span will get a new piece of lumber.
Well, the important thing is here, he's got back in the account one and two after walking the last hitter. So he has regained his focus, his concentration here. A good solid pitch right here, you could put him away. Span hitting just 156 with runners in scoring position this season. Not interested. Minnesota has swept the last three ball games between these two a couple of years ago, and that was in Minnesota. Low. Three and two, the count. Outfield play span a bit to the gap in left center. See why a little bit shallow out in center field. A double right now will tie this game. A lot of times you want to make sure you take that double away. The 3 2. Outside, he walked him. <laughs> Twins fans that are in attendance are liking this. This is a right handed hitter. Kluf will face Hernandez. This time, for the second time, we see Kubel, and curious, we wonder about Patterson. I would imagine Patterson faces Kubel no matter what. I think he has to. He's got a chance. Want to talk about some pressure? He's got a chance. Patterson does to be pitching bases loaded, two outs, and ending this ball game. You know, Scott, it is Merling Vasquez getting loose down there, but right now with one out, you get a ground ball double play, you can get out of here, and that's a mute point. But you got to get it out right here. That one is low. One and oh, the count. So Vasquez joined things down there. And it's an easy thing to say as he works his way through it, but there's just a big difference in the eighth inning and the ninth inning. We touched on that a little bit. It's a different mentality. Nobody's got your back when you're the closer out there. There's a strike. Good fastball. Now suddenly, Matt Caps, the current closer, the former closer with the repaired elbow, Joe Nathan trying to pitch back to success. Nathan probably comes on in a tie. Didn't get the call. Man, that was a good, solid pitch again. That is a money pitch, and Tim Cheetah is just not raising that right arm. I mean, that puts a pitcher in a big hole right there. You make a great pitch right there. And you don't get the call. Outside, three and one, the count with nowhere to put him. A lot of Midwesterners have relocated and made their home here in the Valley. We all know that. There's a lot of Twins fans here tonight. Diamondbacks fans are right there with them. Bases full, the three one. Ball four, he walked in a run. Joe Patterson is coming on out of the bullpen. A rule five pick that was supposed to be a minor leaguer this year. This situation, this isn't the minor leagues.
comes on, one out. The bases are full of twins. He faces Jason Kubel. Patterson has done a fine job with inherited runners this year. Breaking ball, outside corner, strike one. Boy, that was nasty right there. Great first pitch. Now, Joe Patterson needs to make sure he has a nice discernible stop. Sometimes you can get a little amped up out there. This year, the umpires are really calling a lot of box. The 0 1. Kubel fouls it back, buried the fastball in. Boy, oh, yeah, that's a great sign coming in. First pitch, breaking ball for a strike. Comes in with the fastball, gets the foul. Now he's pitching. He's 0 2. This is where he wants to be. Joe rocks and fires, and it's low. How in the world Kubel didn't chase, I have no idea. Oh, that's a great 0 2 pitch. And I'm, I'm with you on that, D. I, there's, that's surprising he didn't chase after that one. I come back with the same pitch. Breaking ball. It's called a ball. I thought he locked him up with strike three. Wow. I'm not quite sure where that pitch missed either. Montero sits up there. That ball crosses the zone. Montero catches it just below the knees, and it's a breaking ball. The 2-2. Two -two. Fastball. Got him! The young man born in Corvallis, Oregon, out of McMinnville High School in Oregon State, is earning his stripes in the big leagues. What a sequence of pitches after missing a, a call. Looked like a great pitch. He comes back and buries a knee-high fastball. Buckles a very talented hitter, Jason Kubel, right there. Now he's got a chance to finish this game off. Morneau takes outside, nowhere to put him. The dangerous slugger starting to feel his oats and to come around. Had a big series in Oakland. Justin Morneau, the MVP in 2006 on 1-0. Breaking ball, fouled back, 1-1. One one. Obviously, Mr. Patterson doesn't have a save in the major leagues. He pitched in crunch time in Omaha. He's a College World Series champion at Oregon State. He had to truly make this team in spring. Did he? Yes, he did. Absolutely he did. He got the call that time on that big sweeping breaking ball. Really fools Morneau. And after you see a swing like that, you got to go right back to it in this game. Nine and a third total innings in the major leagues all season long. Nine and a third. 18 straight scoreless appearances. One of the best starts to begin his career as an Arizona Diamondback. You don't want to mess around with pitches right here. Go to your money pitch. Go for that big breaker. The one, two. On the line toward the hole. Get over there, Joe. Get him. Boy, how about that win right there? What a great job by Joe Patterson. Great pitching sequences right there. That ball looked like it was going to squirt through the infield. A great play by Johnson. But Joe Patterson becoming a fielder. He gets over there, acts like a first baseman, makes the play from Kelly Johnson, and secures the win for the D-backs. He had him pulling a breaking ball away. Kelly Johnson in right field fired to Joe Patterson. Why do you show up at 7? It's spring training and work on your pitcher's fielding practice. That's why. Just a tremendous, what a team win. You look at this from the pitching from Ian Kennedy to Joe Patterson coming in. Unfamiliar territory. He's never been in this situation. And a great job by Kelly Johnson, not only offensively, but making the play right there. Perfect throw right to Joe Patterson.
It's kind of getting fun, folks. I'm going to have to be honest with you. It's kind of getting fun. They've won four in a row, six of seven. We've got to get to the post game because you've got to hear from these guys. Enough of us. Joe Patterson for his big league save. What a ball game. West Diamondbacks live our post game.